Good. Question number two. A soccer ball is kicked from a point 23 meters to the left of the halfway line. Okay. For questions like this, you're always going to assume the y-axis is the halfway line. So a ball is kicked from 23 meters to the left. So that would be point negative 23, 0. And it lands at a point 7 me 17 meters to the right. So it lands here at point 17, 0. Okay. It reaches a maximum height of 10 meters during its parabolic fight, flight. So it reaches a maximum height of 10 somewhere. Okay, We don't know where on the x-axis, but we know it reaches that maximum height. It could be you know, here, 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 here. We don't know. Okay, We know it's going to be at a height of 10, but we don't know where on the x-axis that's going to occur. So we have to go through and solve that. Okay, before we can sketch this accurately. So in order to figure out where on the, uh, what the x coordinate of the vertex is, we have to find the axis of symmetry. Okay, in order to find the axis of symmetry, we have to find the average of the x-intercepts. So the x-intercepts are negative 23 and 17. Okay. Um, now let's find the axis of symmetry. Our axis of symmetry, if we remember, is r plus s divided by 2. These are our r and s values, our x-intercepts. So that is equal to negative 23 plus 17 over 2. Go ahead and solve that. We get negative 6 over 2, which is negative 3. Negative 3. Okay. So our axis of symmetry is x equals negative 3. That means the x-coordinate of our vertex is negative 3. Okay? I'll just type that out for us here. Therefore, the x-coordinate of the vertex is 3. Negative 3, sorry. Make it nice and big so we can read it. Okay, that's too big. Okay, that's fine. Therefore, the x coordinate of the vertex is negative 3. Okay? So, I've, in the question, it tells us that the, the maximum height is 10 meters. Okay? So, the y coordinate of our vertex is 10, and we've now solved for the x coordinate. So, our vertex is at negative 3, 10. Our vertex is at negative 3, 10. We want to sketch this parabola. It's going to look something like this. Good. Okay. What we should have done at the beginning of this question is, um, you know, determine what our x and y actually stand for. Okay. You see that the question is talking to us about height. Okay. So we always know that our y-axis is our height. And it's also talking about distances to the left and right of um, of a halfway line. So our x coordinate is our, or, sorry, our x axis is our horizontal distance. Okay. So the x coordinate of the vertex stands for the horizontal distance from the halfway point. So it's three units to the left, and our y coordinate stands for the height of the ball. Okay. And the height of the ball is at 10 meters. Now let's interpret all of this information. Okay. Okay. First, we have to determine an equation to represent the path of the soccer ball. We have the x-intercepts. They are negative 23 and 17. We also have another point on this parabola. Okay. The vertex is another point. So we have point. Negative 3, 10. Good. So we have the x-intercepts and we have another point. These are our r and s values. The point has x and y values. Okay. This question is going to be a factored form question, okay, because we have the x-intercepts. 
So we want to write this equation in factored form. This is factored form. In order to write the equation in factored form, we need to plug in values for a, r, and s. We have r and s, but not a. In order to solve for a, we can use these values of x and y, r and s, plug those all in, and solve for a. So if we do that, our y is 10, we don't know a, x is negative 3, r, so if we subtract r, so if we subtract negative 23, that'll be plus 23, and then x minus s, so if we subtract s, we'll have x minus 17. Oh, sorry, and our x value, I forgot to plug that in, our x value is negative 3. So we'll have negative 3 minus 17. Go ahead and simplify inside the brackets first. We'll get 20 times negative 20. You then go ahead and multiply 20 by negative 20. You get negative 400. Isolate a value <coughs> by dividing the negative 400 over. And then you can simplify this fraction to negative 1 over 40 in its lowest terms. Okay, so we now have our a, r, and s values. Okay, sorry those are kind of highlighted bad. So we have our a, r, and s values. That's what we need in order to write the final equation. Our final equation is y equals negative 1 over 40. When we write the final equation, we plug in for a, r, and s, not x and y. Okay? So our final equation is x minus r. r is negative 23. So x minus negative 23 is x plus 23. And x minus s. s is 17. So we have x minus 17. There's our final equation. Good. Okay. Part C. Okay, I think we decided we weren't going to do Part C for this question, so we'll get rid of that. If you're wondering how you would do this one, all you do is you plug in 15 for your x value, and then see what the resulting height is. If the resulting height is less than 2 meters, then yes, I will get hit by the ball. If the resulting height is greater than 2 meters, then I will not get hit by the ball. Okay? But we decided not to do that one, so let's do number 3. Okay, we'll only do the first four examples. So the path of a soccer ball is modeled by the relation h equals negative 1 over 16, d minus 28 squared, plus 49. So you'll notice this is in vertex form, okay? where d is the horizontal distance in meters. Okay, So our horizontal distance is our x-axis. d is in place of x. So I'll just write a short form again here. My x-axis is my horizontal distance. And h is the height in meters above the ground. So h is in place of y. So our y-axis is our height. Good. So first part of this question, sketch the graph. In order to sketch the graph, um, what we do is we put the vertex in the middle of the table of values. So our vertex is h, k. So our vertex is 28, 49. And then we pick values to the left and to the right. Okay, I went by 14s because we get nice, nice values that way. Um, so what we're going to do is plug in 14 for d. So d is in place of x. Okay, so yeah, those are synonymous in this question. So I'm going to put 14 in for d into this equation and then solve. If I do that, I believe I get a value of 36.75. Okay, so if I plug 14 in for D, I get 36.75. Okay, if I plug 0 in for D, I get a Y value of 0. We know that parabolas are symmetrical, so on the other side, I get 36.75 and 0 as well. Okay. Sketch this parabola, plot these points, you know, just roughly. 
we know that there's a point at 0, 0 and 56, 0. We know the vertex is at 28.49. And that's all I'll plot just to get a rough picture of this parabola. Okay. Good. So there's a rough sketch of the parabola. Part B asks us what is the maximum height. Okay. We know the y coordinate always stands for the height. Okay. So the height on the y axis at the vertex. The vertex is the maximum point on a parabola. We have to remember that. So the, the height at the vertex is 49 because the y coordinate of the vertex is 49. So what's the maximum height of the ball? 49 meters. And whenever you see maximum, you know we're talking about the vertex. Whenever you see height, you know that's talking about the y coordinate because y is on the vertical axis which always represents the height. Okay. Now it's going to ask us what is the horizontal distance when this occurs. So when it's at its maximum height of 49, what is the horizontal distance? We know the x-coordinate stands for the horizontal distance because our x-axis is the horizontal distance. Okay? So the horizontal distance when it's at its maximum height of 49 is 28 meters. What is the height of the ball at a horizontal distance of 20 meters? In order to figure that out, we need our equation, which is h equals negative 1. Let's try and write that more clear. h equals negative 1 over 16. d minus 28 squared plus 49. So this question is saying, pretty much, if our horizontal distance, which is our d value, okay, horizontal distance is on the x-axis, d is in place of x, so it's saying if our d is 20, what is our h? What is our height? So all you have to do is plug in 20 for d and solve for h. We can go ahead and do that. We get h is negative 1 over 16, 20 minus 28 squared plus 49. That gives us negative 1 over 16 times negative 8 squared plus 49. If you go ahead and simplify that, 